Here's what happened this week at City Council. Pfizer and Moderna have both stated that their vaccine development is more than 90% effective in clinical trials, and we may see FDA approval as early as December with distribution of the vaccine immediately following that. So as a city, we purchased four facilities across the city that will utilize to deliver vaccinations. Our mortality rate continues to increase. Hospitalizations are still high. So we're still really at the epicenter in the surge of this virus. To respond to that, we have rapidly increased our testing capabilities. We have the capacity to test in excess of 10,000 people a day. We're currently averaging about 6,800 tests a day. So there's plenty of capacity for people to go out and get tested. If you think you may have been exposed to the virus, we really encourage you to go and do that. Over the last month, we've worked closely with our medical community as well as uh, the state and at the federal level. And we've received more than 1,350 medical personnel to assist our local hospitals and more will be deployed as needed. Our convention center as well now as, a, as an alternate care facility has 100 bed capacity. The city will also be hosting virtual meetings beginning November 30th to provide additional information uh, to the community. These will, this will be health related information and so city staff will be available to, to brief the neighborhood associations and then answer any questions that the public may have. And so the importance of our update to the community is that battling this pandemic is really a collective effort to reduce the effects of the virus and I want to encourage everybody in the community to do their part. And then finally as we approach the Thanksgiving holiday it's so important to keep top of mind just so how severely the virus has been impacting our city. And I would ask our community to not gather with members outside of your household until we get through this. Uh, today we discussed item four and it was um, to reenact on the emergency ordinance and extend it further. Uh, this is really important for the community so we could support restaurants and similar establishments in their efforts to safely operate. This program is going to alleviate some of the stress that some of the restaurants uh, are facing due to the pandemic. And they're going to be able to provide some service in an outdoor facility. We discussed on Monday item 5.1, which was the subrecipient agreement with Lyft Fund. So to date, we have extended over $17 million in small business relief funds to help our small business recover from COVID-19. We discussed the uh, allocation of $2 million from the impact fund to further support the small business relief fund program. So this will allow businesses that have five to 30 employees and have gross revenues under $30 million to apply for and if eligible, receive grants of up to $50,000 per business. This was just an update on the census efforts by Sanders Wingo and Taylor Collective from the Paso del Norte Complete Count Committee. The census count officially ended October 15th and we received a final report out of our self-reporting numbers from the Census Bureau and other representatives. This matters to the community because the census efforts directly impact the direct allocations of funding for our community. And so a complete count to our community means that, that we will receive the necessary resources that we need for the next 10 years. We focused on sound financial management and how we've been maintaining a solid financial position through proactive budget adjustments in FY 2020 and the use of new tools and resources such as the Budget Stabilization Fund in order to ensure we have funding available for the future needs as well as possible emergency needs as we continue in COVID-19. And as part of FY21, we worked diligently to protect the taxpayers by not increasing the tax rate as well as minimize the impact to services. We also continue to recognize our employees and our very important workforce which represents 77% of the general fund expenditures. 
we have additional pay adjustments that they received in September and October, and no increase to the health care. On a positive note, we've seen since April four consecutive months of sales tax growth, and we have seen overall, in comparison to 2019, only a reduction or under the same year prior year actuals of approximately 300,000 or less than 1%. This is important to our community because it shows that we continue to still grow and have revenue growth in the area and we'll be able to meet the current obligations and hopefully the future obligations of COVID-19. Uh, so this item um, expands the, the downtown management district boundaries an additional 6.6 acres and it includes an additional uh, 38 properties over to the ballpark west area. Um, these properties will um, receive the services provided by the DMV and these services include uh, security, sanitation, parking, transportation, economic development, and quality of life, to name a few. So this um, is important because it means that downtown El, uh, El Paso is expanding and the DMV will be providing economic development opportunities, uh, quality of life. And also, uh, this does not mean there's an additional cost to the city of El Paso, general public, or taxpayers in general. Item 17.1 was both an update and an action item. The update was providing a progress report on how the long-range projects have been ranked through the MPO. The action item was to provide cost savings to the new projects within our portfolio. This is a benefit to our community as we leverage funds and 80% of our funding is paid by both state and federal dollars.